I would say Johnson to come out in this band. Unless, unless Sona. El Ganador Knights are confident in playing against it if Falcon Esports wants to pull it out. Again, we already saw, you know, I do not sleep. Try to do that. Try to play against that uh, Johnson could the combo. And it's still possible, right? So let's see what they decide to do. We're going to find out just a couple seconds what the band's going to be. It's going to be Fanny. And Fanny still uh, seems to be a pretty high priority band, mainly because people just don't want right. to deal with, you know, Fanny unleashing what Fanny does. And even with the changes, Fanny is still a very strong jungle pick. And they don't want to give that over um, to the hands of Falcon Esports. The other thing we got to take notice of is Silent is playing. Silent Waku Waku. But yeah, that's Silent, right? So Silent is here. Uh, he's a man of culture. And that's the thing, right? So this is, they've made a little bit of a swap here. Um, they've changed things slightly, but still, this is still the same Falcon. Right. This is this is what I was talking about when I was saying that the teams even yesterday in Group A, they made minor changes from match to match because this is a great time to kind of switch things up in a best of one, technically. And at the same time, it is going to be the rest of the members of Elgin and Dora Knights locking in that Naomi ban, banning out the Natalia for themselves. And I honestly, it, it's an all around you know, banning coming from the side of El Ganador because there's a ban for every specific type of player, but the Johnson is indeed once again available for the rest of the members of Falcon Esports to be able to utilize unless El Ganador surprises us and says, hey, we can use Johnson too. I, I wouldn't be surprised at that point if that came into occurrence, but we are still waiting for the bans coming in from the side of El Ganador Knights. It's honestly very interesting that they were the ones, the ones rather, to, ba to ban this Paramus pick coming in that could potentially shift the game. But we're already seeing tremendous respect mm -hmm. from that specific hero, but it leaves 1-1 one, one open used here by Nikoshini. And that just goes to show you that they will be ready for the later stages of the game. Thams potentially could be picked up here again. You know what? If it's not the 1-1, one, one, it's the Thams, right? If it's not the Thams, it's the Akai. So it's just like a life cycle of the team of the album. I, you know, we know the Philippines loves 1-1. One, one, so they go ahead and grab that out of the hands. They're comfortable even playing it against if a Beatrix does pop up here. Now, the thing is, is right off the bat, I was going to say, if Thamus wasn't locked in just yet, Thamus would have been a great choice. I wouldn't be surprised if El Ganador decides to take that. But this time, Falcon Esports grabs the Franco. They also have, you know, the Ling. And the thi thing about... Thing about Ling is we've seen Ling struggle yesterday specifically. Um, and that's the thing, like Ling, I get it, right? You have the mobility, you have some good damage, I would say, but you know, typically if we see them grabbing that, uh, the jungle emblem that kind of doesn't have the same effect, for example, like the jungle emblem Karina, right? So uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering to see how they play around having the Ling in the jungle. They have the Franco. I want to see what else they round this out with. Specifically, too, what gold lane Silent decides to play against the 1-1. The because he... Uh, I mean, his hero pool is pretty deep in terms of those gold lane options. But we'll see how that goes. They do end that last pick with a Fovius. What do you think of the Fovius, Sona? Honestly, Phobius, given that there is a 1-1 one, one from the other side, that will really pose a huge threat for that gold laner. So basically, Falcon, with their picks for the first three, is to just stop the 1-1 one, one from scaling. And take a look at the Naomi, at Naomi rather, who has the Iron Hawk, and the Ling that could potentially go and gank that gold lane very, very easily. I'm still curious to see if Yellow Flash will be the one to face. Nikoshimi into the gold lane because we are also seeing signs from the different uh, regions and countries using this Phobius into the gold lane. So that's a very good matchup if you ask me. But it is going to be Angela together with the Eve band out. Interesting band here. Angela hasn't been used at all, as far as I know, in um, the whole uh, or the totality rather of Top Clan's Summer Invitational. But they're not going to take any chances with that specific support hero. And ban, in, uh, and ban it out for themselves. Atlas also going to be the same for them. 
But El Ganador would also... Well, it's very interesting that El Ganador tends to ban the E for themselves because it would also be another good pickup for them knowing that there's Yellow Flash. Yellow Flash won't be able to use any type of Demonic Force type of skill because Eve is just gonna stand there. And Lilia is gonna be another one of their bans. So Cecilion might be contested here absolutely for both of the teams. And Lunox might also be part of the case unless it will go to the gold or the mid lane. But hold up. Are we really gonna see a Nana in this stage? Ah. Okay, no. No, they're just messing with us. But. So that's the thing. I wonder if they Sicilian or Xavier. Like Xavier's still open too. They could. I mean, we haven't seen much of Xavier, honestly, right? Um, but you have a couple options because if you take out the Eve here, I can see them either prioritizing that Sicilian pick if they really want to to help kind of cause that chaos and also have that late game potential scaling with the stacks. But at the same time, you you don't exactly know. You know what's going to be across board this could also be a mid julian right um but let's see because they're hovering over kagura and the edith who we haven't seen pop out just yet both of them right so showing the xavier this is what i was leaning towards either sicilian or xavier that's why they took out the eve and there you go it is locked in so finally um we're gonna see a philippine team bring out the xavier here now the edith that's the interesting thing Right, Edith is yep. going to be the uh, interesting pick here because, you know, is that is it, that's essentially going to be your roamer, mm -hmm. right? This is well, yeah, this is going to be a roam. Edith is going to be a roam. I like to call it the one-two combo. So, I'm wondering how that's going to work out here. You're going to have Edith, and also you're going to have Xavier, or Xavier, and how that kind of transitions for them. So, I was wondering if that Julian was going to go in the mid lane, but. If they're if they're showing this Lunox, that's not going to be the case. It's going to be, um, yeah, okay. They're actually probably going to lock this in. There it is. The Lunox comes in. How's this looking for you, Sona? It's it's an interesting lineup from Falcon Esports, I gotta say. Right? You're gonna have a Ling well, in the jungle here, and you've got the Franco row. Honestly, I like the Lunox pick to wrap up basically the damage coming in from the side of Falcon Esports because if you can remember, this is again. Another one of those lineups that Falcon has pulled off in game number one to four, where they didn't have a lot of range, but they tend to fight them with ongoing melee. Well, I'm probably talking about another team, but we've seen it so in some way being executed to perfection in, in the best way possible. So Falcon not relying on the Johnson this time around because it was a, a risk basically that El Ganador was willing to take and Falcon didn't go for that one through a curveball and this time around we are going to be seeing Lunox basically on to the gold lane and I am absolutely right because you're seeing Justin there holding that Julian potentially giving the damage out to the rest of the members of El Ganador Knights and let's see if Sky's savior debut for this day will finally get a win and there's already a hook in like the first 15 to 20 seconds of the game, but the pressure is being felt as El Ganador and Bakun commence it. So, so going back, right? Junglers, yeah, both running Demon Slayer. We're back to that. We're back to that point. But overall, that matchup, you got to be really careful with Nikushimi here and not letting that one one get to the point where you know one ones really just start to tear things up. But already in the mid lane for the Lith Wanderer. So far, it is going to be Naomi cut off up to 25% of his health, but the Franco's easily going to be able to escape. And this is just the pressure coming in from the savior, right? You immediately have the crowd control scale. Yeah, so in, in going back to the, the point here too, you know, you put Zip here in the, the gold lane against the one one. I think that's the best way to control one one, right? Is have that kind of that mage there because mostly most marksmen are going to struggle against one one so i think this is a good choice but again you need to get to that scaling point now in the jungle mm -hmm. that is going to be the first blood brought about by the rest of the members of andre and right now there's a wonderful first blood coming in from that specific hero and you need that's how that time is to be able to scale immediately for el ganador knights to be able to get in with their initiations in terms of the fights but Back on esports, though, they're still uh, trying to play it as passive as they can. But Kise 
it, as far as I know, has always been marvelous in terms of what he wanted to do in terms of the initiation, most especially because there's not a lot of mobile heroes coming in from the side of Falcon Esports. However, it is going to be him pummeled to the ground here unless using that flicker skill to be able to get away and Karina will be able to get that turtle at the same time. Yellow Flash caught in the Tarakas here using the Demonic Force to hopefully escape. That is not going to be the case so far. It is going to be another bling takeout by the side of Elkan, the Door Knights and they are on a roll. Locking in three to nine. Big pickups here, right? Big pickup from El Ganador Knights. And again, Andre just showing why Thamus is such a priority pick. And now the lockdown here in the bottom lane, not much he can do here to survive this one. One KS bolt to the face and he goes down, right? So they find a pick here. And that, so that's the thing, right? Andre is showing just how strong Thamus is as a pick, even with or without the vengeance, right? You're still able to tank quite a bit of damage. That's just one of the kits. That's just the way that Thamus works, right? Counting Inferno and everything else. But I will say that as the game progresses onward, you got to make sure that... Because what we've seen before is Famous is very strong early game. And then as the game progresses and they they, they build properly, the enemy team is going to counter build into that, uh, that sustain and everything else. And they start to get damage items. That's where it gets a little difficult. But not having a traditional... Kind of marksman i feel like for falcon esports is again something that a lot of teams like to do once in a while right and yeah. at times it really does work and at other times you can see that definite struggle with not having that traditional marksman in the gold lane right and that could become an apparent obstacle for them to overcome later on in the game mid to late game depending on how the scaling works because i still feel like that you know julian like Julian is the wild card for me too, because at some point your kind of job is just to get those, the knockups up, you know, get the enhanced chains up and get, get, I mean, he has damage. Don't get me wrong. Julian has damage, but at some point in the game, you're looking to set your team up for those kills, those follow-up kills and everything. And I, I'm just feeling like Falcon Esports, they're lacking a little bit here in a couple different departments and yep. At this pace, the pace that things are going right now with El Ganador Knights kind of controlling it and leading it, this is not the, the situation they wanted to be in. Like Falcon Esports with what they drafted, it's better if they had this type of start. If they, you know, they were already controlling the momentum. But right now, we haven't even seen much from the Wan Wan, right? They did get a kill. They're focusing on there. They that That is a good game plan. But as these objectives kind of build up here, you don't really have the tools right now to deal with that bully that Thamus is. Yep. And we're slowly talking about that Thamus because it, it, it is indeed going to be a problem for them, most especially because of the first blood that was secured by that hero on towards the XP lane. And together with those uh, skills and major objectives that they have secured in the first one, they are now leading at least a 1.6 thousand in terms of gold, which would help them widen the gap even further because we are also talking about Sky here that also needs the items and the, um, you know, the minions just to be able to provide an impact. And he also needs to get as close as possible to the rest of the members just to be able to give the damage in. But there comes Earth Shatter. But Naomi will Ooh. still stay alive unless it is the Karina King Frenzies right there to finish things off for good for El Ganador. And it is still the side of the Knights making sure that Falcon will stay in place. Ice is doing a great job here on this Edith Rome, right? Just finding the one two combinations, looking for the setup, got the shot call as well. And King Frenzy was there, right? It, it just worked so well. At the same time, one of the biggest chances that I've seen all throughout the competition was the fact that El Ganador has always been managing what they wanted to do in terms of their engagement. And it has been moving forward at, into what they wanted to do as a team. 
because of the fact that now Falcon Esports is being forced to actually try and get the necessary items and the initiations for them to be able to bounce back in this game. But so far, it's Andre and the rest of the El Ganador Knights actually sustaining those hits. But so far, it's going to be the Vengeance with the Bloody Hunt not going to be able to hit anyone. Instead, Earth Shatter is going to be there with the Dawning Light at the same time. El Ganador picks up one more hero and the Turtle in the process. And the Knights are just getting what they want at this point. Yeah, like... The the, this is what I was talking about, right? The the thing is, you don't really have the tools yet to deal with El Ganador Knights. And that's the thing. We haven't even seen much from Nikush Nikushimi on this 1-1. One -one. He hasn't really had to do much. And what is the trend when you're gold laner? Yes, he has one death. But for the majority of the part, he hasn't really been bothered. And now they're here in the bottom lane. But what is the trend of gold laners that get to just kind of farm up and have a good time early on, right? It's... Mm -hmm. It becomes a disaster later on. So my biggest question here with Falcon Esports is also, you know, Yellow Flash on this Fovius. Like, is that enough later on in the game to be kind of that front line, that tanky, that tanky member, um, whether you're following up or chasing people down? Because then otherwise you only have Naomi. But look at the top lane. They're focusing up there. Basically, they just want to pick things off, but it is going to be another Julian picked off by the rest of the members of El Ganador and Falcon. Basically, going to do the same. But a double kill lands here, make it three heroes potentially being taken down by the rest of the members of El Ganador. Yellow Flash is still fighting for his life, but the bullet is going to hit. And together with that light, a sky is the limit for Falcon, and not to be able to escape at that point. And it is El Ganador once more locking in another hero and possibly a turret in the process. And slowly but surely, Sky is finally racking up the items, but so is Zips. And Zip, mind you, so far hasn't really been noticed in this specific fight. 1-0 and 0. And at the same time, he is getting a lot of the itemizations and the stacks to be able to provide the damage all throughout the, beam, the Lunox. But he's seen Justin at this point using the ultimate to be able to get away. And that is going to be the end of the fight before the turtle is about to be spawned again. Because Naomi and he said they want a Naomi and they want a Naomi to go down. And that is indeed going to be another smooth take from the turtle by the side of the Ganador. Yeah, and interesting because I just feel like, you know, Silent is struggling in the jungle. Again, we're used to seeing him play the gold lane, but they did the Swamp Rooney here. And, uh, you know, with Silent in the jungle on this lane, he's not able to do exactly what he wants to do. And as I was saying, he's pretty much just split pushing at this point, right? Because as I was saying in the draft, the thing about Ling is if you are choked out of your buffs and if you just can't, you know, you just can't even damage the enemy team because of just how much of a snowball effect they have. You're literally your only option as that Ling jungle is to split push. Look for turrets around the map. Look for those waves. Push those in and hope that that's the, you know, the most efficient way that you can farm up. So that later on, the best thing you can do is look for those cleanup kills or bait even with the Tempest of Blades, right? Depending on how you want to play around that. So this is the thing, once again, where it's difficult because even the Julian in the mid lane, as I've argued before... It's tough because if you're matching it, especially against a, a low cooldown hero like Xavier, this you can see the struggle, right? And Xavier already has, like, he has Mystery Shop too. So he's getting those items much quicker. And you know at one point, the Dawning Light is going to be on, what, less than maybe a 14-second cooldown, if not less. And because Xavier can do that and do that from a safe range, while if you look at the lineup of Falcon Esports where... They really, again, have to fight kind of closer to their enemy right. teams unless they get a hook off to displace someone. Then it's much more difficult with what they're going up against. So, and again, you're you're not even considering Nikushimi yet, right? You're still just mm -hmm. looking at their kind of front line, which is Andre, Keys, and even King Frenzy to an extent. Now the assault on the mid lane here. So far, uh, the turret has been taken out into half of his health, but a good split push tactic is being done here by um, by the rest of the members coming in from Falcon. However, the rest of El Ganador is now going to be in terms of the fight times using that vengeance together with the Cotter and Inferno to just zone out three and four. Make that five members coming in, but Yellow Flash is going to be able to take one down and the rest of the members of El Ganador will be able to secure that Lord and Phobias at the same time. 
paying so much attention and attention to detail is the rest of El Garador as King Frenzy wants to take one more, but it is continuously the re the Ling from the side of Falcon Esports making sure that he is still on a roll. It's silent, but being deadly at the same time in this specific matchup. However, El Garador already have the Lord marching into the top lane. It's going to be up to Falcon to be able to defend. Well, it is still not a Luminous Lord just yet, so they still have a chance. However, Nikushimi, though, already almost racking up the items. Take a look at the replay. Yeah, so take a look at the replay, right? Then this is the thing. Andre actually able to take quite a bit of damage himself, even using that Vengeance, but eventually he goes down. And also you'll notice that Silent cleans up. Like I said, he's able to go ahead and find a kill for himself. But meanwhile, too... It, that's the thing, right? Justin able to grab that double kill. That's a saving grace for him because he had struggled in the early game. And this is the thing, right? You still have to deal with the other members. Nikushimi able to get an assist there, but still really wasn't... You know, he didn't even have to do much there. So the Lord, what does that What does that Lord get them, right? El Ganador Knights, it gets them some turrets, get them some space around the map. Um, yes, some members did go down, but Falcon Esports needs to continue to keep that pace, like match the pace right now with the Ganador Knights. How are they going to do that? Well, that's exactly what Silent is doing. He is doing the only thing he can do right now and continuing to push the map. But now that he's gotten, you know, those first turrets in those lanes down, he needs to be able to put pressure enough, which he's trying to do on those tier two turrets. Mind you also, the map is not open enough yet in the middle lane. That tier one is still up. So that's a huge advantage right now for El Ganador Knights. Yeah, but so far they are stuck right here, catching all of the dawning light, and it is going to be the Lunox going down for a Falcon El Ganador after that Savior Ultimate has managed to secure yet another kill for their squad. Athena Shield has finally been secured here by Andre and it's, it's El Ganador, man, just making the right place at the right time, and they are not forcing the team fight after they've managed to take down one. Another Dawning Knight just to be able to dish out the poking damage that will be able to hit Yellow Flash at that point, and it is going to be the purple buff taken, fortunately, by a Silent at that point, so El Ganador will just have to take another purple buff off their own however falcon really needs to step it up right over here because less than 20 seconds the lord is about to spawn and this might just be a luminous lord this time around yeah tough situation to be in here for falcon as again they've they're relying on this franco pick and this is what we're seeing a lot from franco right looking for the picks late game uh, we've seen it we've seen it previously a hook can change the course of a game either win or lose and right now Lord's going to be actually juggled around here, but look at the jungle, Sona. Mm, it's just too much damage for Yellow Flash to be able to take with that hook. is going to come in with the counter into the Inferno. Andre, though, is going to be able to escape and stay alive, but not Naomi. For Naomi, not so much. That is going to be the crossbow time popped off, and the Dawning Light is going to be evaded by Justin in that specific fight, but it is another clean objective taking coming from the side of Elden Door Knights and Man. Oh man, every time there is always an objective thing that is about to happen, there's always going to be a pick off that El Ganador is going to do and force Falcon Esports to retreat and go back to the base, which is why now the Lord is marching onto the mid lane. Yeah, and which, again, they should be fine with. They should be able to clear it okay. But the thing is, is with the lead that is currently in favor of El Ganador Knights, they could just punch it in here if they really wanted to because... I mean, look at the tankiness they have, and now here you go. The base going to be focused on right now. Yup, base from the middle inhibitor is going to be gone, oh. but not is Karina right now. It is going to be the Earth Shattered landing in, but he will pop off the immortality. Damage the blades onto the backside. Meanwhile, it is the Cutter and Inferno trying to catch them all, but it is going to be the Crossbow of Tang landing through that lane at the same time. However, it's only three heroes remaining. For the, for the side of El Ganador, will they be able to actually do something about it? It's three versus three. Sky and King of Frenzy will be out of the picture for the moment by the side of El Ganador, but an amazing defense coming in from Falcon. You already know what they're about to do once the counter engage actually managed to happen. However, Silent Waku Waku was taken out of the equation. But, but still, it was a beautiful fight for the side of um, Falcon Esports. Yeah, I mean, looking at the replay, right? This is, so like, Yellow Flash is there. 
he's being that big front for Falcon Esports. But still, the downside is you don't have much range, right? And that's that's the thing. So when they have that kind of favor in those team fights, if they can't continue to follow up and El Ganador Knights just continue to disengage, it's really hard to follow up here. But looking at the items too, they're starting to get to the point where they are going to have a, a, a quite a bit of damage, right? The majority of Falcon Esports almost to the 15 minute mark but the thing is they need to be able to get a little bit of defense too on some of these key heroes just like even justin yeah justin's looking for the knockups but also he has to get in there too to provide some of that damage that he has even with you know the emblems that he's rolling like that burning damage will amount to something right it does every little bit counts but this is the thing once again they're having a hard time getting past this kind of like front line of El Ganador Knights, literally the Knights, right? Especially the, even the Edith, right? Edith quite tanky, but then you got to deal with Andre with that vengeance. So by the time you even find that initiation, Falcon Esports is having a trouble following it up, but Concealed Play is going to come out. Concealed Play is going to be here indeed. Will they find anyone? And that is indeed going to be oh. Zip, though, which is why the Lunox is going to go down. But the Hook might just take the set. But no, that is not going to be the case. So another safe pick off for them. And of course, right on schedule, man. The Lord is about to spawn once again. But taking a look at the top side, that is where um, Silent is right now just being absolutely quiet with every single objective that is about to do at this point. But so is El Ganador, although Silent was able to take an inhibitor turret. So that is a still a win for the side of Falcon. How, but on the other hand, it's still El Ganador managing to take the macro gameplay for themselves, locking in this Lord, and hopefully it will help them to finish the game. Again, that's the best thing you can do, right? If you're struggling in a game as a Ling, the best thing you can do is push around, put pressure around the map, split push, get the turrets. At least, yeah, he got that inhibitor turret. That's a big pickup. But now they have to defend against this Lord marching down the mid lane, which we've seen them do before. But they got to be very careful here, especially because Sky, at this point, 16 minutes in, the dawning lights are going to be popping out quite often, too. But we, there it is, the Lord almost to the base. Let's see. Falcon Esports can actually defend against this rush. Concealed play is about to be used here. If they're battling a Ling without a purple buff at this moment. It is going to be Andre, though, picked off by the Ling. And the Lord might just go down. And what a wonderful defense. Once again, coming in from Falcon, holding on to the crystal base. It is another silent gameplay once again for the side of Falcon Esports. Dawning Light just to be able to give the vision. But Naomi doesn't seem to be so scared anymore, knowing that Andre, the frontliner for the side of El Ganador Knights, is already absent in this specific second. It is a Falcon now trying to get to initiate the way for them to be able to win and fight back in this game. They need to get silent to get this mid turret down, man. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what they're that's what they're aiming up to do here right now. So, they got to be careful. Falcon Esports finally getting some territory here too. Like I said, they got to get the mid turret down. That'll open up things a little more. Let's see if they actually give an initiation here. King Frenzy going to go ahead and take that purple buff. And uh, everybody being very careful. Just ar uh, playing around those hooks. So far, that is going to be a boomerang. Just hitting one of the members of El Ganador. Andre is already back in action for the night. And uh, Falcon is just absolutely careful. They know that they already have two inhibitor turrets down. And once that pickoff starts for the rest of the members of Falcon, it is not going to be a good sign for them. A Sea Halberd secured here by a Silent up um, facing this Kise and Andre in terms of the sustain and the physical defense that they've had as a team. Just to be able to feel the front line from the side of the El Ganador Knights because that has been the continuous problem coming in from El Ganador, which is the sustain and continuous damage that it can give to prolong and extend the team fights. And... They're just basically waiting for this Lord, and they're waiting for the right moment to strike. Yeah, right now, tough, right? Because Lord's going to be up here in a couple seconds. This is going to be the, the big one, right? Because this Lord, whoever gets it, either the base is going to be exposed of El Ganador Knights, if somehow Falcon Esports can take this one, or they're going to have to defend again, which I still think, even with this Lord, Falcon Esports can definitely defend, right? But already, Lord's going to be worked on here. 
Let's see if what team actually wants to commit to this one because everybody is here. All lanes too, just about even. But a big push of minions at the bottom lane. Lord less than half health. Lord at 30%, but it's gonna be another hill coming in for Andre. Meanwhile, Ooh. on the back side, Nikushimi though might just be able to fly using the crossbow of Bang, but no one is just staying taken down yet. And it is gonna be yellow flash. Femis of Blades being committed right over here, but no, not yet. It is gonna be landing silent, making sure that the retribution will come into play. But King Frenzy is gonna go ham on the rest of the members of Falcon and Ooh. Dawning Light will be able to hit Naomi and Yellow Flash are the only people alive. It is the popping off the immortality and the earth shadow is gonna finish that a specific of Franco and is a yellow flash once again the only person standing for the side of Falcon Esports will they be able to do so and it looks like the rest of the members of El Ganador will be locking things up they don't mind yellow flash dunking and it's El Ganador getting their first win of the game